uh, welcome to all let us start with today's presentation today our webinar is focused on a concept or a topic called firestop so before we start my name is muzaffar i am going to be your presenter today i am the regional manager for firestop for middle east i am supported by our marketing head mr navin he will be answering your chats just some small uh, pointers kindly do not use internet explorer apart from that all the other browsers are fine kindly do not do any parallel downloads during the seminar during the webinar as this will slow down the speed and might be there will be some kind of lag questions will be answered at the end and during the presentation based on whatever i have presented there will be some random questions and kindly take part in answering those we will have some surprise gifts for those who answer correctly let me introduce the interface basically what you see on your screen on the on the top you could see a double arrow this if you click you will have a full screen view of the presentation apart from that you have a sub page in that sub page there is chat there is questions and there is polls so we have chat as you all know you can chat during the presentation then we have a questions pane kindly post your questions only in this pane as if you if you post any questions in the chat we would miss that question and we would not be able to answer you so if you place the question and on the question you could also add the relevant slide number so that we can go back to the slide while answering then we have polls at the end of the presentation and at the end of the webinar kindly take part in this polls as this will help us enhance your experience for the future webinars the basic time split for the webinar is 45 minutes from 11 to 11:45 we'll have a thorough presentation on firestop and the topics related to that we have a question answer session post the webinar that is about 10 minutes and then we have a poll and feedback session for 5 minutes kindly stay with us for the entire webinar session so to start with let us see what we are intending to learn today the first topic that we present today is pacifier protection and what is firestop within that pacifier protection then we talk about codes testing and technology so how why and what is going on behind the scenes of firestop the last thing that you would learn is different field applications this covers only about 40% of the whole of firestop topic however because of the limitation of time we would limit our presentation only to this to begin with let me ask you a simple question is fire good you can answer this question in the chat window also so you think fire is bad really what do you think about this this then so now people might start thinking fire is good and then what about this what we see here is a small difference just fire which is controlled is good for us we cook food we have a lot of benefits of controlled flame the engines work on fire however if we have an uncontrolled fire it becomes very dangerous so now mr satish do you still think fire is dangerous and mr ahmed has done a wonderful reply it is good when you deal with it safely now when we talk about safety we say that controlled fire is good and uncontrolled fire is disaster so this is quite common in our world because we deal with fire every day so we need to control the uncontrolled fire and that is what is all about fire protection when we talk about fire protection 
we have to go with a balanced approach in balanced approach we essentially need to immediately detect if there is a fire within an environment so we have smoke detectors installed in many buildings once it is detected we want suppression system to activate this will try to reduce the impact of fire however there is a third pillar which most of us miss or are not well versed with which is called containment now containment is part of a pacify protection now you would ask what is this pacify protection let us have a look the detector the detection system and the sprinkler system are part of a systems which is called as active systems these are plan a in fire protection so the moment there is fire these get activated these need water and power and these need continuous maintenance also many a times it can be turned off like for example in your building if there is a fire alarm test they might turn off some zones just for testing so these are active systems very good very nice to have in a building however you know if the plan a fails you always need a plan b however this plan b is also part of the whole of fire protection strategy of a building so we come to something called passive systems what is passive systems we divide the building into different zones these zones are divided by something called fire barriers so what you see on your screen is red color lines depicting the fire walls and the cyan color lines which are also depicting the fire walls what happens what we mean by pacifier protection in this context is if there is a fire in one particular zone we want these fire barriers to prevent flame smoke toxic gases to pass into other zones this is what is called as pacifier protection so basically when we think about pacifier protection we are talking about the fire barriers so it's very clear the active systems work the passive fire system also work the best part about passive fire system is it is designed into the fabric of the building you cannot switch it off it requires minimum maintenance so once you have it there it is there on always on so once we said that let us have a look imagine that somebody has designed a fire barrier between two rooms and in that fire barrier you have just a pencil hole 10 mm in diameter imagine there is a fire and that fire fills up the fire side of the barrier can you guess how long will it take for fire and smoke to pass through from that small pencil hole so that you're not able to see your own screen own hand which is 18 inches in front of you as you as you can see fire and the smoke travels at a speed of 3 minutes 40 seconds uh, sorry smoke travels at a speed of 1 miles per second and it would take just 3 minute 40 seconds to fill a 6 square meter room full of smoke from that 10 mm of pencil hole so that you are not able to see your own hands so guys let me ask you this question what is the worst killer during a fire incident it obviously is smoke and toxic gases so we need a fire barrier we need active systems we need the fire barrier to be perfectly capable of stopping even smoke and gases apart from just flames so i have introduced a small concept here that the fire barrier and then the active systems so let us build on to that imagine that you have a house or a building usually the building is divided into rooms and then in a kitchen in a small kitchen you have a small fire imagine there is active systems the active system start working 
However, you know, the active system requires water backup and there is a limitation to the water tank. So the active system sprinkler system has worked. However, it is not enough. What happens next is the flame becomes bigger. Once it becomes bigger, since it is uncontrolled, we have a chance of spreading across the whole of the house. This is what we want to prevent. Even though active system has done its work, we still want to prevent something as disastrous as this happening. Imagine that you would have made up a, a, a passive fire protection system around here. It would be very easy to control or contain that fire within that room. Let me now introduce a second concept of fire rating. Generally, the fire rating is of the fire barrier itself. So the fire barrier has a rating, say, of two hours. What does that mean? It means that if there is a fire, this barrier is supposed to contain that fire on the fire side for up to two hours. It should not allow smoke, toxic gases, and flames to pass through it. Now imagine on our project, we have something like this. Somebody has constructed a fire barrier, two hours rated. And then the MEP contractor comes in makes a hole in that fire barrier you guys remember that 10 mm diameter of a hole within three minutes caused a disaster now imagine holes as big as these that you see on your screen what would be the consequence can i ask you a question now this fire barrier on the top right side was 2r rated somebody decided Cut an opening. Now, please tell me what is the rating of this fire barrier? How many of you can say is this fire barrier 2R rated or 1R rated? Thank you for answering. Obviously, this barrier has become 0 hour rated because of this opening. Hence, the contractor has spent a huge lot of amount of money. However, it has resulted in zero. So now we introduce the concept of fire stop. What is fire stop? Fire stop is basically reinstating the rating of the fire barrier after it has been broken by some action. So, for example, you have joints, you have MEP penetrating, and then you do a treatment on that. And that is what is called as fire stopping so our concepts building up let me remind passive fire protection active fire protection what is passive fire protection then fire barriers and now to fire stop so when we talk about fire stop we have to remember some parameters so fire stopping would be required in fire barriers only and where it would be required it would be required where the fire barrier has been breached by introducing some kind of service. So we have obviously cable trays, pipes, ducts passing through the fire barrier. Sometimes also you have some civil joints. So let us discuss about that a little bit later. But some important points to remember. Always fire stopping depends on the substrate that we want to fire stop. What is the rating of the substrate? So substrate, what I mean by is floor, wall. What is it made up of? Gypsum, drywall, concrete wall block wall what is the rating of that based on that then what is the penetrant type what is the penetrant size so you have a penetrant like cable tray or a pipe what is it what is the size of that what is the type of the pipe we'll discuss in detail but remember these are just the parameters that you need to keep in mind then what is the insulation on top of the service what is the type of the insulation what is the size of the insulation and then very very important the annular gap the gap between the service and the opening that is called as annular space or annular gap then there is joint width so if you have a civil joint like for example a wall and a slab you have a joint here so what is the joint gap right and then what is the backer backing material what is the sealant that is used all of these parameters are 
are always mentioned in the solution provided. Now, when I talk about solution, it is either a UL listed system or a BS listed system. So all of these parameters, you need to make sure that the actual field application match exactly with these parameters within the solution. Otherwise, again, the fire rating will not be reinstated and it would remain zero. We'll have a look in future slides what comes up. So let us just go and learn a small topic of Firestop technologies. How are these Firestop products actually functioning? They basically function on four main concepts, four main technologies. The first and the most common is called Intumescent. Everybody heard about Intumescent. You hear, you hear Intumescent painting, you hear Intumescent coatings. But what is this Intumescent? Intumescent is a material which expands when exposed to heat. Basically, you have a material, you expose it to heat, it expands. Now, it can either expand with a huge pressure or it can just expand without any pressure. So these are two types of intumescent. Generally, people think carbon-based material are intumescent. There are also other material which are intumescent. So we have sealants which are intumescent without pressure and we have wraps and collars which are intumescent with pressure. Now, why would we need these two types of intumescent? We'll talk about it in the applications. The second way the Firestop products work is called endothermic. Now endothermic is just a chemical coating which releases water which is bound within the chemical coating itself when it is exposed to fire and heat like the board system. So in this presentation I am also introducing the products which I will collect collect at the end of the presentation and then you will know exactly where to apply what type of product and what the product is actually working on. So it would give you a brief idea how the product works, how the product functions and what is the product name. So coming to the third principle, it's called ablative or carbonization. Basically, this material just burns and generates a protective insulating layer on top of itself. So it won't allow heat and flame to pass by. Examples are our FEAM sealant. Finally, we have insulative products, which are there, which have an internal capacity to just insulate without allowing heat or flames to pass through the material itself. For example, our FFSC, motor, Fisher FFSC motor. Now the next slide talks about the systems, the standards and the testing. Basically all Firestop applications have to be tested. You remember that I told in the beginning when we were discussing about the fire rated barrier, the rating is always related to the barrier. So somebody constructs a barrier which is 2R rated. Somebody comes in, makes a hole, a huge hole to pass his MEP pipe. The rating of the barrier is now zero. So when we want to reinstate that, we use something called fire stopping. Now fire stopping has to be tested. This, since this is related to fire, we cannot do mathematical calculation and say, okay, now if I use a sealant thickness of 5 mm for two hours, I'm going to have a fire barrier of four hours. Let me use 10 mm of sealant and it would be done. No, it does not work that way. It has to be tested. For testing, there are certain standards. On your screen, we see three main standards. Apart from this, there are many more other standards which are relevant. However, we concentrate on this uh, owing to our region, basically the Middle Eastern region. Uh, the acceptable standards are British standard BS476, the European norm or European standard EN 1366 and EN 1366 part 3 and 4. We also have one more standard for curtain wall testing, but we'll go to that a little bit later. And then we have the ASTM standard, which is ASTM E1966 for joints and ASTM E814. The same, the similarly, there is a UL standard. Now, these standards are giving a description 
or a way how to test a particular system. The system consisting of the substrate, the backing material, the penetrant, the penetrant insulation, all the parameters that we discussed a little while earlier. And based on that testing method, different organizations do testing. So we have the UL, which is testing based on these standards. We have the Warrington Fire, or we have different laboratories testing based on this. Once they do a test, they issue something called a test report. However, that is not the end. Then they do something called certification. And once the certification is complete, you get something called as listed systems. So all of these agencies, they do testing, the reporting, and certification. Once the certification is done, based on that certification, the local civil defense approves or rejects the particular product. So we are always testing a system. So if somebody asks me a question, uh, Muzaffar, give me a sealant which is 4R fire rated. Is that question correct? What should be an answer to that question? Let me ask you this question. So is a question, give me a product which is 4R fire rated, correct or incorrect? Is it? Yeah, it is not a correct question because always the rating is given to an entire system. So we do have products which are tested in systems up to five hours rated. However, for example, if your fire rated barrier itself is just two hours, what is the benefit of giving you a product which is five hour tested? Doesn't make sense. It's just a waste of money. So we also want to do proper engineering and we want to ensure that it is effective, efficient, and economic. We don't want to give you solutions which are highly engineered over engineered basically excuse me so just some parameters that you get during a tested system or a listed system so we have three main test standards okay each of them tests on certain parameters the first one is fire rating in british or in european it is called integrity and stability so they have to they have to be they don't allow flames and smoke to pass through the fire barrier. And then in American, the similar thing is called as F rating. Then again, there is a second rating called temperature rating. Now temperature rating is when there is a fire on the fire side of the barrier, it should not allow heat to penetrate through the fire barrier such that the non-fire side of the wall does not reach a temperature of 180 degrees. This is very important in a passage. So the passage is having a fire barrier, which is supposed to stop flames and heat to pass by. Because if you have a heat, you can imagine that if you place a hand over a burner, even though flames do not touch you, just because of the heat, your hand would get injured, quite injured. So imagine that you want to escape a fire zone and there is a temperature rise on the non-fire side of the barrier. So we do not want that also. So this is also tested. So in many cases, you have F rating and then you have the T rating. In uh, European and British, it is called as insulation rating. Apart from that, there are some additional tests before which a certification is given, like air leakage, water leakage. And then in American, we also have the famous host stream test, which is not required for British and European testing. Now we have so many, uh, we have a standard procedure of test. We have a standard listing and certification. All right. Apart from that, it always happens. These are, these testing are done in a controlled environment. Now you go to a project site. You start functioning, you start working, you start building up the fire barriers, you start designing, you start doing all of that. And then suddenly somebody comes and breaks the fire barrier. And then they they break an opening of say 150 mm. And you ask them, why did you make this opening? They say, we want to pass a pipe. Okay, what is the pipe size? He says, I want, I have a conduit of only 25 mm. 
the question is why did he make such a big opening so dear friends it is very important to plan especially you have to concentrate on the fire barrier layout in from the beginning of the project if you plan the fire barrier layout and you plan the openings within the fire barrier you could save a lot of money and let me not paint a rosy picture these fire stop material are really really expensive we want to make sure that you use the minimum of that so that you achieve the required rating that's all so during your initial phase of the project itself you plan that there is a firewall don't allow anybody to break it until you have planned what will be the solution there and based on the solution you give the cutout size however it always happens that somebody comes up and breaks the wall more than that is required so it's one of the parameter does not match then what you do the listed system says that you need an annual gap of 45 mm on the site somebody has made an annual gap of say 60 mm what do you do there is no listed system anywhere so as per the international fire stop council they have issued a guidelines that the manufacturer based on his internal testing his internal experience he can issue something called an engineering judgment which would satisfy the field application it would give you a solution to apply based on your actual field application this is what is called as engineering judgment however you need to ensure that you have minimum possible engineering judgments on your project this can only be ensured if you have planned the fire barrier from the beginning if you have planned the opening sizes from the beginning and once the engineering judgment is issued this can be used as a solution however please remember there are limitations so somebody comes up and says i am having a, a five, five by five meter of opening please give me an engineering judgment so that wouldn't work that wouldn't work it's not a good idea to have such kind of openings right so let us move on from these basic concepts that we have developed let us move on to the concept the actual applications of fire stop imagine you have a firehouse a house which is made up of slabs you have a floor you have walls you have decking on top you have facades all of that so where all do you need fire stopping every floor is fire rated make no mistake apart from that the fire barrier layout is given by the fire consultant and then we do fire stopping only in those walls not just in every wall so in this case you have some active systems and you have some passive systems passive systems include the fire stop also passive system let me introduce to you that it is not only fire stopping it also includes the fire doors so we need to also seal around the fire door we need to seal around all the penetrations for ease of explanation i have divided the applications into two main categories number one civil joints related to civil contractors obviously your fire barrier would be constructed up to a certain level of the slab you would not construct the fire barrier flush to the slab so you have a small joint that joint is what we are referring to here as civil joint apart from that joint you would have joints between the deck sheet right and you would have joints between uh, floor to floor so construction joints expansion joints all of that so if there is a fire rated barrier that would also need to be a fire stopped joint similarly we have mep services now in mep services you can just imagine how many different type of mep services you have on a project i have just tried to accumulate them into the shown mep services however i cannot accumulate all the services here so we will talk about some of the major services and if you have specific questions you can definitely keep posting them in the question pane and please do refer to the slide number also so i can open that slide again and explain the same concept to you guys continuation so you have metal pipes you have insulated metallic pipes you have plastic pipes you have cable trays cable bundles multiple penetrations insu insulated metal ducts and metal ducts let us go in detail of each application how do you fire stop these 
compartment breaches. Number one, let's go to head of all joints. We have systems which are tested to, let me just explain to you the layout of the slide. On the left hand side, you will see the application. Below that, you will see what are the testing and certification that we have. And then you will have an image of the application. Will I'll explain to you the application itself and a small image of our product that we have used in this particular application. These are most of them are real applications, field applications. And I thank the projects for allowing us to present these photographs. So here we here we go. The first and the most common application that you get on a project site is the head of wall joint. So what you see here is a fire barrier which is intersecting the floor on top. You need to have a joint. This joint needs to be fire stop. We have used our product FIAM, Fisher Intumescent Acoustic Mastic. This comes in white in color and it can be painted over it. So if you have an exposed ceiling, this is one of the best product that you could use. Now I mean by best product, not only because it's white in color, also because it has certain important characteristics. For up to 60 mm joint width, you could install just 5 mm thick sealant to achieve a fire rating of up to four hours. You save a lot of money by using this sealant. Then, apart from that, we have something called RFS 640, which is promoted for movement joints. So you have the deck, which is having a huge movement. You need something that can be sprayed. Now imagine, this sealant was just 5 mm thick. RFS can do the same job in 3 mm thick. Now imagine for a head of wall joint, which is concealed in a false ceiling, you just need 3 mm thick of sealant for up to a 20 mm joint width without any overlap. So you can imagine how much material that you can save because generally for RFS type of products, you would have, you would have a lot of overlapping. Coming to floor to floor and wall to wall joints, we have something called FFRS and FIAM. Obviously, you need the backing material as per the listed system. Let us see what happens if in case you have an improperly sealed room compared to a properly sealed room. So on the left, there is an improperly sealed room and you can see a lot of accumulation of smoke. However, on the right hand side, you see a properly sealed room without much of smoke escape and no flames. So this is the benefit of having a proper fire stopping of civil joints. Coming to a second important topic, which is curtain wall system. In many of our markets, we have huge glass facades. This glass facade has a gap between the floor. And obviously the fire can escape from the below onto the next if there is no fire stopping system in this zone. So we have a system for that which is called as RFS system. You just need 1.6 mm thick of the sealant. Compared to that in the market usual products available, you need a 3 mm thick of sealant. So you save 50% of the material and the application is very fast compared to steel plates that generally people use and are not approved to be used for this kind of application. However, we have another solution if you do not want to use a wet system, something called FC FCL. This FCL, FCL, for example, if you have a 200 mm joint width, you just cut two 10 mm of FC FCL board. It comes in preform board, compress it and fix it. That's all. You have a two hour rated fire joint here. No problem. Also, this FC FCL could use, be used for large size head of wall joints and other applications as well. But this is one of the best system and one of the fastest system that you could use for facade application. There is one more type of facade. These are glass facades. Now there is one more type of facade which is called as stone facade. Now always these facades have a ventilation gap behind the facade. So you have a structural wall, you have the facade and you have a ventilation gap. 
generally what happens if there is a fire in one particular room this ventilation behaves like a chimney so we need to do a fire stopping in this zone also so we divide that into a different compartments so we have something called a venti stop which ensures that you have the ventilation gap that you need but during a fire it will expand and close the gap so you can see here in this image that the ga ventilation gap which will be covered by the venti stop so this is one of the other application let us move on to MEP services. For the metallic pipes, we propose our sealant called FIAMUS, which is just 6 mm thick. You need for up to 600 dia or more size of pipes. Also, for multiple met metallic pipes, you could also use RFS, just 3 mm thick. These are one of the most efficient sealants out there in the market that you could use without any tension. We see what happens if in case you use a fire stop foam generally some foams come as fire stop foams but please remember none of the pu foams are tested for mep services and you can see the consequence of using the wrong product and the benefit of using the right product in this video moving on we have the insulated metallic pipes as you as you can see we have tested systems listed to ul and also to british standards so here we can see the insulation and in this application let me remind you that it's a very very important parameter the insulation thickness and insulation type the proposed products would be fiam ufs and figm and let us have a look at what happens in this case so in this case what you see is two identical looking pipes identical looking applications these are exactly same except the type of insulation just because the type of insulation has changed let us see the consequence the application is same and as a consequence you can see the insulation has burned away and there is a huge gap so please guys ensure that when you give us a question you mention all the parameters that is required to be considered Coming to plastic pipes, the best solution for up to two inch dia pipe is FIAM US again, with just 13 mm thick with mineral wool backer. All of these solutions that I'm giving you here are related to concrete walls. We have solutions also for dry walls. However, now going beyond that two inch pipe, we have bigger pipes of PVC pipe that you encounter on the side. Now, can I ask you, if you have a pipe which is greater than two inch, let's say up to 125 dia, what type of solution do you generally see on your project side? Obviously, many people would see wraps and collars. Now, wraps and collars are really, really expensive. So we have come up with another product called FIGM. This is a graphite-based mastic, which can be used up to 125 dia PVC pipe without any wrap, without any collar one of the most effective and efficient solution for pvc pipe however when we proceed to bigger pipes we have to go with wraps and collars now you remember that intumescent with pressure the sealant was intumescent only the graphite is having intumescent with pressure our figm is having intumescent with pressure that is why we have tested systems up to 125 dia this can crush the pvc pipe expand crush and close the gap let us have a look at how it behaves so imagine you have a pvc pipe which is not properly sealed and a pvc pipe which is properly sealed let us have a look how it behaves also and you can see the in the pipe has disappeared because of that there's a big gap and this gap has led to flames and smoke escaping from this so you need something that can expand and crush so let me show you how this behaves so when there is a flame it expands it closes the gap but it is coming with pressure so it crushes that pipe very easily moving on let's go to some electrical services cable trays what is our solution for cable trays we have mineral wool backing with rfs 640 just 3 mm thick you could also use a motor just 65 mm thick to achieve a 2r fire rating but I would suggest that we go with RFS. This can be applied using either a spray machine or a, or a scraper 
just to achieve a 3 mm thick and it would be very very easy to apply also the easiest of all application wise is our fcps board which can be used for cable trays without overcoating then we have metal ducts now you should know that metal ducts we always need to construct the metal ducts as per the smecna standards now smecna standards state that there is a requirement for a retaining angle so here i just show you the application of the sealant and then on top of that you need to apply a retaining angle so that the duct doesn't deform under fire also insulated ducts and the non insulated ducts have different applications for us we have tested FIAM US with insulated as well as non insulated duct up to 2.5 meters duct however there are certain cases where we could give you solutions without retaining angle for smaller size ducts as per individual requirements apart from ducts we have something called damper ducts now damper ducts itself is part of pacify protection so it needs to expand when there is fire so when it expands it needs to have an expansion gap so all we as fire stop need to do is prevent smoke to pass by so we provide something called as just as a smoke seal using our fiam this could be applied over the retaining angle of the duct of the damper duct with just 6 mm crown bead very efficient very effective and then you come across huge openings with multiple penetrations now this can be sealed by using the fcps panel board alternatively it could be sealed with ffsc mortar we suggest that fcps panel board is the easiest to apply the fastest to apply so as you know every project has its own timeline now if you go with ff a mortar type sealant if the specification calls for that we have to go for mortar type sealant otherwise we could seal it with the fcps board itself now guys many or many a times in the project you come across some openings which you cannot close with the mortar and this only is the best solution we always suggest try to reduce the opening size to as much as possible and then ask us for solution we give you the most economic solution that is possible similarly as i told you we could also go with ffsc compound now you should remember if all the services are non combustible type services we could just fill it up with ffsc and finished however there are certain times when you have uh, plastic pipes and combustible pipes passing through so you need a combination of products and that is what we call as engineering judgment or also some of the listed systems which we could use if all the parameters are matching your field application this guys was the basic concept of fire stop coming to fisher why would you want to go with fisher as a fire stop solution provider we say that our strong points are because we have testing to multiple standards very rarely you find in a market a supplier which has multiple test standards supporting their products and then we have extensive product line we have approval from local civil defense within your country be it oman be it dubai be it saudi be it any of these countries we have civil defense approvals then we have extensive project references and we have technical support and trainings that similar to what we are doing we come to your your project site we give training to your team and we certify them let me introduce the product range again we were talking about the different products we have divided the products into four main categories the sealants the sprays and coatings the wraps and collars and then the boards and mortars now sealants we have fiam fiam us ufs figm so let me not go in detail of the names we give you the solutions as and when you require them but rest assured you can come to us for one stop shop so as i display the number of listed systems that we have is more than 400 on the ul website you can go and a huge list of projects that we can work this gives you a complete peace of mind as part of our service we provide you with sketches that you could include in your shop drawings schedules that you could include in your shop drawings for fire stop 
from the beginning of your project this helps you by saving time by saving your cost so as a part of service as i told you we come to the site we do the training we do the mock-up and that is what we do as part of our firestop range let me just introduce you what other products we have we also have the anchors where you could use for different applications we have the installation systems which could be used for MEP services which could be used for facade applications which could be used for huge MEP service supports then we have the foams and sealants and the firestop range we have regular seminar webinars for these products also please if you are interested stay with us thank you and very much now it's time for your questions guys please do ask us your questions we would be happy to answer them we have a 10 minute question answer session so let me start with the questions what is this system from mr mohammed quram he has asked a question what is the system for cable tray penetration which is your system is best for fire stop motor or fire stop pillows ah, okay let me rephrase that question uh, he asked a question saying that which solution is best as per ul for cable trace now as i discussed with you guys that ul is testing and listing system based on different test standards so the question would be what i would uh, prefer to answer is which is the best system that you could use for your project so for if you for if for example many of the projects call for astm standards then we go for the motor some projects call for astm as well as european standard or equivalent so in that case we would propose the boat system as the best system for for cable trace however you also come across different kind of cable trays so in case you have an it type of cable tray which requires regular replacement of cable cable uh, cables and all that then for that you obviously need a system which is easily modifiable so we propose our fisher intermission pillows so these pillows can just be placed inside the opening and finished that's all the next question was asked by mr fakhar munir kindly repeat the carbonization factor so carbonization type of products for fire stop fire fire stopping is basically a type of product which generates a kind of layer on top of itself so it burns it generates an ash kind of layer on top of it which does not evaporate this ash layer is basically the one which is insulating heat from penetrating the body of the fire barrier this is what is carbonization and we could visit you and give you a detail more much more detailed about uh, fire stopping technical aspects during a longer presentation the next question from Muhammad Liakhat, what is the solution for doors? Doors generally come in different type of solution, different testing. So if a door is tested with only fire stop foam, we could provide the fire stop foam. And however, the fire stop foam will always, the fire stop foam as a solution would always come with a capping. So if you have a capping of uh, uh, architrave, this would be actually tested as per the door system. The next question comes from uh, will you guys seal the opening from both side how many inches the motor filled from both sides of opening of thickness 6 mm so to understand the question basically they are asking if it is sealed from both sides. obviously we would refer you to the listed system just as a concept let me tell you that the wall is always fire rated from both sides basically the wall is dividing into two zones so both zones need to be fire rated we don't want the fire to penetrate the wall from either side so obviously for the wall you need both side testing systems however we have tested systems which for example head of wall joint we could do an application only from one side that is 10 mm thick of sealant with PE backer rod finished it is fire rated from both sides Similarly, we can give a sandwich type of application for walls. Coming to floors, you can do an application only on one side based on different listed systems. Are your products Saudi Aramco approved? We would come back to you on this shortly. We are in the process of getting all the approvals. What is the solution for doors? We have already answered. Please explain with real time example on pressurized fire stop material how these fire stop behaves. Now, generally, fire stop material is 
uh, intumescent material and as I have shown you in that slide how it behaves so I, I hope this answer this question has been answered during the presentation itself how would we calculate the quantity of fire stop material required for respective MEP services now as a as a added on service we give you an excel sheet where you could fill in your service details your opening details and we give you the solution as well as quantity of the material this is an added on service that we provide please do not hesitate to ask us by via email saying that you want to know the fire stop quantities we will send you a template you just keep filling that in based on your quantification of the penetration on the site and we give you the complete quantity again uh, the next question that i have received is can we by visual inspection just check if the existing wall is fire rated or installation with fire stop now basically uh, a visual inspection won't give us the detail whether the fire uh, the wall itself is fire rated or not however you could there are telltale signs that whether this uh, firewall is uh, whether this wall is a fire rated wall or not so for example if there is a fire uh, if there is a fire damper in that wall obviously that wall is a fire wall if there is a fire door in that wall then obviously that is a fire wall however you need to go back to the drawing and make sure that that is a fire wall to use the fire stop material secondly always after fire stop installation there should be a sticker close to that fire stop installation stating that it is a fire stop installation do not penetrate this sticker for example in the markets uh, in the zones on the regions of qatar and dubai are strictly regulated by civil defense and it has to be applied by someone who's doing the application however in other markets other regions we supply fisher branded fire stickers that you could use and you could install in that particular zone once you have done the fire stopping uh, the next question are there fire stop solutions approved for outdoor use exposed to weather in general the fire barrier isn't fire rated which is exposed to the external uh, weather however in many cases when the buildings are close by or there is a parking space or there is some kind of uh, instance where the uh, fire life safe safety strategy of the building calls for the fire barrier to be exposed to the external factors we have very few sealants that are exposed to fire barriers but we do have it however we also provide solutions for external exposed fire stopping thank you very much if we have any other questions yes uh, kindly share the excel sheet of MEP parameters for fire stop solution quantity definitely mr. juicer we will share it with you uh, miss Ramia has asked what is the warranty period for an applied fire sealant now obviously as I told you this fire stop once it is applied and it has cured we say that the product life of the fire stop product is up to 30 years however we generally give the warranty based on uh, the project specification requirement kindly give us the presentation we will definitely share our representatives will get in touch with you mr usman thank you very much for asking this question we will definitely share it with you and we will ask our representative representatives to visit you and get in touch with you we hope you had a good time having the knowledge transfer and i hope i was able to uh, accumulate all the knowledge that i could share with you within this given time now please guys before you leave kindly attend the poll which is on your screen on the right hand side there is a polls section please click on the polls you have certain questions that you could click and answer i request you to please kindly give us this feedback 